Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Things are waking up. Let's go take a tour of the garden. Well, it's 80 degrees outside today. That's crazy. It's uh, nice and warm. Things are waking up in the garden. It's kind of breezy today too, but I got a lot of stuff to show you. It doesn't look like there's much in the garden because there's not, but there's a little bit in. And what's on this, this fruit deck here, what's over in the far side of my yard, it's really exciting. Let's go take a look. We'll start our tour this time on my little two by six bed here. I've got one on the far side of my fruit deck here and I've got another one over on the other side of the patio. And both of them are gonna be heavy with herbs and flowers and pollinator tractors this year. So I've just planted this one and uh, man, it smells so good. So I've got some mizuna there, some rosemary. I've got an oregano over there, which I expect if it takes off, it will fill this bed. I've got some marjoram, a couple of those. I've got some thyme here. That's a nice uh, crawly ground cover too. And I've got some sage over there, a couple varieties. And uh, these, uh, these herbs ought to get big enough to pretty much fill in this bed. These will be eaten before too long and I'll plug in a pepper plant there. I've got some perilla planted here in a container. If you're not familiar with this, this is a uh, Asian edible leaf plant. And this leaf has a very delightful flavor. Some people compare it to cinnamon, but it's not quite that. It's got a nice flavor though. And uh, in Korean cooking, you uh, often find this as a wrap. And uh, it's eaten as a, as a side dish. It's very delicious. So I'm really excited to have some perilla. I got a pepper in a bucket there. That's a, a red bell pepper. I'm gonna compare that to the ones I put in the garden bed. Some tomato plants have been put in to containers to accompany my tomato plants over there. This is my chili tepin. It's a local kind of native and it's got uh, real hot peppers, little hot tiny little peppers. Hoping that'll grow in that bucket there. There's plenty of space for it. Right next to my elderberry which survived the freeze and is bouncing back like crazy. And this is my tomato bed and I've got 20 plants in there. If you saw my planting tomatoes video you know about these. I'm going to train them up a string on this trellis here. So uh, yeah they're growing, they're in. This bed over here is going to be my miscellaneous bed. I'm going to have cucumbers in here and my beans are coming up. These are just standard old green beans. Uh, old Homestead, which uh, I think is the same as the Kentucky, I don't know, Old Homestead. Let's go with that. That's what they are. But they're the same variety as some other classic old heirloom variety. So beans are coming up. That's good. I have to build a trellis here. The um, tomatoes, where I have extra tomatoes, I'm plugging in. Uh, plug, plugging them in in uh, containers. These are determinants, so they'll grow uh, bush height and will stop. Uh, I'm going to see if this thyme down here will come back. The rosemary looks like it's making a go of it. This rosemary is all woody though, and I find when rosemary gets real woody in its second and third year, and that's a uh, second year rosemary, maybe even third, uh, it's not as easy to work with, so I'm going to probably replace that, but I'm going to just give it some more time to see what happens. All right, we've got our pollinator attractors ready to go. It's nice to pick up a batch of those when you're at the big box store. And we're just gonna plug those in along the garden wherever we need some color. Bed number one is gonna be mostly peppers, but I've got four yellow squash plants in there. And those will, those will be pretty good size when they fill out. And hopefully we get some squash before the vine borers show up. But I'm also going to plant a lot of peppers in here and maybe some other miscellaneous things. So um, this is my only bed over here that's monocultured, that's uh, monocropped, just tomatoes. I usually don't like that, but for the sake of testing this trellis system, I had to do it that way this year. But I usually like interplanting different things, and that's what we're doing here. All right, well, we have our raised bed here filled with herbs, and stuff is coming up. It's been a little bit slow. And some of what is in there, like that one right there, that's chickweed. So um, not sure what St. John's wort looks like when it comes up. I think that's chickweed, and I think why St. John's wort did not come up. But we've got uh, some safflower. I plugged in some chamomile. We've got some uh, toothache plant. We've got some uh, various other things in here. And some of it's coming up, like this right over here and some of it's not so anyway we're going to fill this up with herbs and flowers and pollinator attractors i also took the opportunity to plug in some of my uh, herbs here in, a, in this old pot 
we've got some chamomile and some yarrow some toothache plant we'll have to thin that out but once they get going so uh, yeah out here on the on the patio where our herbs are rosemary is doing well because we saved it from the trees uh, there's the starts of all my various uh, chamomile and yarrow and toothache plant got some lavender and my thyme has decided to come back and grow nice and thick for a second year we've got some uh, Asian bunching onions that are in here we're going to plant these out in the garden and uh, yeah so all, all the things out here on the patio are starting to wake up this uh, old pepper plant is doing well I think that one's a goner but this one is uh, putting on some growth it's just now starting to wake up and the oregano survived because we took it inside so I am hardening off my peppers they're just about ready in fact I think they could go out now but um, yeah these are about six or seven varieties of peppers bell peppers and hot peppers a couple of sweet peppers so uh, looking good nice and healthy this is my Owari Satsuma orange and uh, it is putting on tons and tons of blossoms. It's got some baby fruits on it already. But I've been uh, really looking forward to these producing. And man, the smell is just so good. This little tree right here, gonna need some shaping, but this is our replacement Meyer lemon for Lucy, who's not looking like she's gonna recover. So this is Ethel. And there's some blossoms. We love Meyer lemons. Hard as we tried, I don't think we were able to save Lucy from the freeze. I had a, a heat lamp on Lucy underneath a big cover that was completely over her. It uh, froze solid and so provided some insulation. And I think it would have survived had the light not gone off when the power went out for many days. And so she just sat out here and Lucy froze. And we're waiting to see if there's any growth going to bud out from lower down, those heavier pieces of wood there. But I don't have a lot of hope for Lucy. You can see how tangled up and how messed up this tree is in there. Because when I put Lucy in, I didn't know about pruning trees. And so I let Lucy get a little bound up in the middle. But she's been a good producer for us. We had hundreds of pounds of lemons this year. So... We're sad to lose this one, but hey, let's start over. We had that big Texas freeze, and I thought for sure that I'd lost all my fig trees. But look at that. Many of them are starting to come back. Many of them are putting on green. Some of them aren't. But even the ones I thought were goners are starting to bud out. This one is a goner. But look right next to it. So now I've found these varieties that are survivors that are budding out, like this guy. Now I know the ones that are a little more cold hardy than the others. Unfortunately, I think I lost my Smith and I lost my uh, Hunt, two of my favorite figs, but that's okay. This is one we took into the house, so we knew this one would, would uh, survive. This is a, a Ronde de Bordeaux. Look at this, even these guys down here in pots, waking up like nothing even happened. Waking up. These are last year's starts, and look at that. Amazing. Even this one here. Incredible. What do we, what do we have here? This is, well, oh, this is a uh, yellow long neck. This one died. I even cut it down because uh, I wasn't sure if the root system was going to put up any, any effort. But we'll see. Can you can you imagine that? 17 degrees below freezing for an extended amount of time, and some of these plants just want to live. That's awesome. This is new. If you saw my video on Hugo Culture, you saw me plant this uh, this trough here, and the blackberry plants that are in there. There's three different varieties. They're waking up. One there one down there that looks kind of sad but they're starting to wake up and put on some new growth yeah that's gonna be fun blackberries these are caning types they'll bunch up in here and get pretty tall uh, these are my goji berries down here my goji berry is waking up putting on a lot of growth looking forward to that that is a superfood this is a fig tree that I'm growing for somebody and that is a clone of my Celeste fig tree out front and it survived the freeze 
the Celeste is actually pretty tough. All the fig trees in my neighborhood that are probably Celeste are putting on leaves right now. Here's some other blackberries, Natchez thornless blackberries. These are going to be transferred somewhere else when I find a spot for them, but they needed a home. Yeah. Cloth pot seemed right. Look at this. This is a Dorset golden apple, and it is budding. The scion wood has come through the parafilm. The bud is growing. I think that graft is a good graft. It obviously it took, but we'll see if this uh, if this little apple tree can make it. I'm real excited. All the apple trees are starting to show swelling buds or actual green. So we're going to keep these apple trees very small, even though they're on M111 uh, rootstock, which is a full-size standard rootstock. We can dwarf these trees by summer pruning and following the backyard orchard culture methods so that we can plant these trees this close together and they won't interfere with one another. We will summer prune to stunt their growth, we will winter prune to shape, and we will tend to these trees very carefully. Uh, you don't want to be doing uh, backyard orchard culture if you're not going to stay on top of your trees. Yeah, see that one's got a little bud coming out there. So that's new. Apple trees. Folks who were worried about my plum tree, that I cut it back so much, well, here's what, what it's doing. It's pushing out new growth now, and it is waking up. Everything seems to be emerging. Everything is waking up, and it's nice and warm, and spring is definitely here, except for this guy. This is my peach tree. Looking at the various peach trees in the various nurseries around, uh, most of the peaches aren't budding yet. I've been looking every day for signs that the buds are swelling. So far, no. Well, the Celeste survived like a champ. I don't think the graft survived. Although this one over here is showing a little green, but I don't think it's going to actually make it. This one is almost certainly dead. What I was trying to do is take some of my favorite varieties that uh, I was going to, or some of the varieties that I, I wanted to keep around, but not necessarily in pots anymore, and graft a few branches onto my existing fig tree just to see if I can make a Franken fig. And we still may have to start over though. So things are really getting going now. Spring is here, and before long, this is going to be a tomato jungle. That's going to be filled with peppers and squash. I have a trellis full of cucumbers and beans over there. Who knows what else we're going to put in there. I'd have to go look at my plan. I'm going to have tomatoes galore. We're going to have all kinds of fruit. I have some figs this year. Some oranges. Lots of herbs. Man, what a blessing this garden has been to me. And I hope it's been a blessing to you. Well, hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Like our channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please subscribe, that'd really mean a lot to us, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening, bye-bye.